You've had your first uh, press conference, your first results release as an independent operator. Um, how does it feel? It feel, it's an absolutely tremendous feeling. I would say it was the very first time in many years that I was nervous this morning, but it went extremely well. What, what, what are you able to do now that you weren't able to do before? What, what's changed for Daimler Trucks as an independent unit? You can say on the one side, uh, not much changed because we worked uh, as entrepreneurs already inside Daimler AG. But on the other side, a lot of change. The, the, be, uh, the, the best thing was we had now a 40 minutes analyst hearing A afterwards, and we solely talked about trucks. There was not a single passenger car questions. Normally, it was just the other way around. Uh, it's been a difficult quarter to, to go solo, to say the least, right? I mean, you've had already supply chain and at chip problems. Now you've got the war in Ukraine. Um, how does that, especially the war, change business for you? I mean, the war had, had two impacts uh, on our business. First of all, we immediately stopped all our activities in Russia. Uh, and we are going in the first quarter to write off our entire assets in Russia, which, which will be about a 200 million hit uh, into our results in the first quarter. Uh, secondly, we certainly are going to lose our business we had in Russia, uh, Belarus, and the Ukraine. But this is less than 1% of our sales, so I would say we can compensate that in other regions of the world. Everything else, I would say, we still uh, see a strong demand for our products. We have an absolutely great product lineup, uh, both in Europe and in the United States. I see here no, not so much such big impact at the moment into our business. So demand remains strong. I wonder about moving your supply chain around. Is that work that you've got to do? Uh, our supply chain, fortunately, wasn't impacted too much by Ukraine and Russia. Uh, we, we basically have no impact on that side because we, we were fortunate not to have any suppliers in Ukraine, as some of our competitors had. Uh, and I'm sorry for that situation for them. But here we, have, we are the lucky ones this time. Uh, how has uh, this... On the other side, demand is absolutely strong. We have a record, and I would uh, order backlog, especially in the United States. If we could produce more trucks, we would immediately find buyer for those trucks. So here we are more limited on the semiconductor side. This is still going on. This was the biggest constraint we had in the second half of last year, and it continues, especially here in the first quarter, and maybe drag into the second quarter as well. Can you quantify that constraint for us? How many units of production um, you've lost due to the semiconductor shortage? A and Tell us also when you expect to be back to normal. When will you be, you know, swimming in semiconductors so that you can produce as many trucks as you like? Uh, first question, I would say 50,000 plus trucks. We could, e could have easily produced more last year than uh, we actually did. And the same number applies certainly for this year as well. When do I have enough semiconductors? I hope somewhere towards the end of the year. We do a lot when it comes to technical solutions, looking for second sources, looking to reduce the number of semiconductors by combining function in one semiconductor. Uh, and uh, our suppliers are definitely going to ramp up the production of the semiconductors. So uh, I would say we'll see relief in the second half of 2022 and then dragging on positively into 2023. What about the rest of the supply chain, Martin? I mean, in terms of raw materials um, or parts, I'm, ass I'm assuming costs have gone up pretty substantially. What kind of inflation are you experiencing, and are you able to pass that on to consumers? I mean, first of all, yes, uh, you're fully right. It started with steel and aluminum, but mean meanwhile, it has impacted nearly every single part we have. We see significant price increases, and now comes on top of it, or higher costs for energy, uh, especially when it comes to inbound and outbound freight. So yes, we are going to pass on those pricing uh, to our customers, uh, and that means significantly uh, more cost for trucks, but with a high demand, uh, we are able to pass that on. Let's talk about the fun stuff now, and that is the future of trucking. Um, in terms of innovation on the sustainability side, are we going to see fully electric trucks from Daimler? Yeah, absolutely. We, 
We already have a, a pretty broad lineup, uh, but we are continuing. We, we are launching in the United States our long uh, eCascadia for, for a 300 mile range. Uh, we are going to, uh, to launch that in uh, pretty soon, first quarter, second quarter of this year, going into serious production, meaning really able to sell quite uh, this truck in quantities. We are already very active on the school bus side uh, in, in North America. Uh, we have 50% uh, market share in the electric city bus. Uh, in, in Germany, we are expanding our sales in Europe for that truck. We Mercedes ramps up. We bring out a, a specialized refuse, tr uh, refuse truck uh, on uh, zero as, as a zero emission truck. As you see, I can go on, con continue and go on forever. Right. It's a whole breadth of our product lineup going zero, zero emission uh, now and in the future. And, until when? I mean, when, when were the, will there be no more internal combustion engines driving Daimler trucks? It's a very difficult question. No more uh, is, is, is a long, it will be a long way. I, I would see we see a significant ramp up in the second half of the decade. Uh, it depends, it goes from region to region. Uh, look, we, we, we sell, we are market share leader in Saudi Arabia as well as in South America. Uh, there's certainly the US and, and Europe will lead the way. Other countries will follow. Inner city traffic will be first uh, before we go to, to every single uh, nook and cranny on the long distance one. Uh, I would say this is a long pass until it's 100% zero electric. But the big ramp up will happen four or five years down the road. Always think it's not just our product lineup, it's the infrastructure as well. It's an enormous amount of energy we need along the road before the entire long distance uh, is, is going zero emissions. Let me finally ask you about autonomous functionality. You've already got a tremendous amount of safety technology in the trucks, but at what point um, will they be able to, to drive themselves? I would say potentially sooner than we think. Uh, we are working both with Waymo and with our own subsidiary Talk Robotics on autonomous driving, especially in the United States. And, and stay tuned. I think we'll come up with more news in the second quarter of this year.